Hello. Hello there. Today we are talking about top three fillers. And for me, at least for me, uh, filler games are games that I can play between some bigger games or I can play when I have a small pause, a sort of a break, uh, lunch break or something like that. So something in between or after or before, like a snack, you know. For me, um, I would even add that we usually don't play filler games at all. We don't, we're not into the, let's say, the classical filler genre. Mm -hmm. But the games we're going to mention here are more like, like each person has the games that are feel like a real game and feels like an ambition. So the game that I wouldn't play just on its own, but I would add like play in between or after other games. So it's it's just it's absolutely personal. Yeah, yeah. I would play this game like a separate game, but I would play them like two times in a row, three times, four times in a row sometimes. Yeah, so it maybe. depends. Um yeah. Um so let's start with uh number threes. Um I'll start with mine. Yes. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, my number three is a game that probably Alina likes a lot. If you have seen uh, our top uh, ten of 2015, and it's Flip City. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, it's a TMG title, and uh, I mostly like their titles. It's a deck builder. That's the other thing. Um, on the, on the other hand, the deck builder, I don't like them that much. Uh, there are exceptions, of course, and Flip City is one of them. Why? Because as a deck builder, it's unique. First of all, it's fast. Uh, it has push a uh, mechanic in it, where you are like putting the cards on the table and trying not to get too many unhappy faces. All the cards are like two sides, and you flip them into better sides, and you try to like get the best hands into into like yeah the best cards into your hands and so on. It's engaging. It's it's fast, um, and it has like a lot of that randomness that I like sometimes in games. Mm -hmm. And it's a small. It's cool. It's portable as well. Flip City for me a number three. So makes me happy. <laughs> My number three three is Red Seven. Uh, this game is uh, by Carl Chudik. He makes really these special, unique card games. Smart games. So, yeah, the, his games are really smart. That's that's right. So in this game, you have this game actually looks really simple, and I would say it's perhaps a bad thing in the game because it, from the look of the game, you would expect something like Uno or Face. 10 or something something like that but it's not yeah. actually it's much more thinky it's much more engaging much more game than those so people who would like who might like the game wouldn't look at the game and people who like the games really simple games wouldn't like that because it's much more thinky so in that game you have uh, just a simple cards with numbers and colors each round you have to put a card or two cards and you have to win that round. So it is it's definitely luck based because you have like the hand of cards which you get from the beginning, but the way you manage the cards, the way you decide when to play, when to change the rule or or else it's, it's like it's it's different. It's really unique. Yeah. Cool number three, because let's go to number two, and my number two is Red Seven as well. <laughs> yeah, um, I got some notes here as well. Yeah, um, I wanted to add something first. Yeah, it's uh, first of all, it's fast. Uh, that's one of the uh, criteria that I was talking about. I play it many times in a row. You play, you can play it till the points. You can play it as like uh, it's like simple rounds. Games, it's, mm -mm. But to play in rounds, like to, for, for points, it's much more... Yeah, yeah, the although, game... although you can play uh, for points and you can play it for points many times in a row. And it will be a lot, so I can play it eight times in a row. And four times the first, you know, game and the second round, second... Doesn't, I wouldn't play. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not the point. Uh, the point is that, yeah, 
you have basically colors, you have numbers, and you have rules printed on the cards. And rules are really simple. Uh, the highest card wins, the most uh, like even cards win, and even what, numbers, even yeah, even numbers, sorry, win, and so and so on. And uh, you, you play, uh, you have a pallet in front of you that you play cards on, sort of, a, yeah, abstractly. Or you can change the rule at the center of the table. And I, I like how you mess with um, the uh, with your opponent by you. What what you want to do? You want to play a card that will benefit you in future rounds mm -hmm. and uh, also mess up uh, your opponent's plans. Uh, so that's where it gets really smart. And that's like a, such a like a balance. You you might want to play more cards in front of you to get the bigger palette that you could later like manipulate, or on the other side actually want to uh, to keep more cards in hand. Yeah. So it's such a like keep, keep cards in hand because there can be something unpredictable mm -hmm. coming up. So red seven is it's also it's portable as well. We have a, a deck. Um, I don't. I cannot find it. Whatever. Um, yeah, we have a like a, what was it? Rainbow cat. The neon cat. Yeah, ne neon cat. All right, the neon cat uh, deck box that we put the cards in. We sleeve the cards, and that's it. That's basically a small number of cards, and game is genius. Really. Yeah, I truly agree. So your number like, two. My number two is Flip City. <laughs> There will be um, a lot of crossover. Me, yes, um, though I don't think there will be crossover in number, two, number one. You sure? I think so, yes. I think okay. so. Okay, yeah. Uh, I really, truly, with all my heart, love Flip City. I like, it's it's really unique. It's a deck building builder that doesn't really feel like deck builder. It's yeah. the push your luck game where the push your luck is not just random luck because most cases you just take the card and see what happens and but here you draw cards from your deck that you build, yeah. and the way that you when you shuffle you can't look at them because and like be attentive because they're both sides, and you choose either you buy a new card or you flip the card, and so there is so many possibilities, and it's such an engaging. It's small. It has the you know this good tension, like oh I don't know which is the next one shall I flip the next one or not so. It's really yeah, although it's random, it's not like a Port Royale, for example, where you just flip cards and yes, see it, what happens. You exactly. Know? Here you can control that randomness. It's yeah. it's under your control still because you can know, you can count, you can approximately mm -hmm. know what's what's this, waiting in the in the deck. Mm -hmm. This game needs a, an expansion badly. Uh, it's in the works. It will be available this year. Soon. Soon. Yeah, it should be soon. This year, definitely, we don't know much information about it. But this game needs an expansion or even two. It needs a lot more variability. That what it lacks right now. I didn't have that problem though. Uh, all right, but it's yeah. no. But I, I really looking forward to to the expansion. Yeah, expansions will add up to that spice. No, all right. So um, to number one, my number one is yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if it's yours as well. Let's see. What's your number one? Code names. Hmm. No? Yes? No. no. All right. Sad. All right. Um, yeah, all right. So you can say code names is a party game. I would say that as well. I yes. feel it more party game than filler. Uh, okay. Um, I can understand that. But uh, why party game cannot be a filler game at the same time? We have. Uh, game mechanics and game genres meshing up. We have, for example, Robinson Crusoe like worker placement, Euro worker placement meshed up with cooperative elements and so on. So here we can have it as well. For me, Codenames is a filler game. Why? My criteria. I can play it before, after or between games. And that's what we did lately in the uh, winter camp, in the board gaming in camp. In winter camp, even, you know, that through the ages was filler for us. No, no, no. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, but honestly, for me, Codenames is kidding. Uh, kidding. <laughs> Fil filler game. Uh, and why I like it? You have a simple grid of different words. You have a spy master, you have your team. So, Spymaster tells one word, one number, that's a clue. 
the team gets to guess. And uh, you probably know everything about code names. You have heard about code names mm -hmm. everywhere. But what I like uh, quite much as, as well in this game is after the game. It's how you're discussing what uh, you should have guessed or what I was meaning by this and this and this and this. That's the... If, if the game makes me want to discuss that game after it has ended, then it's a great game. So or yeah, it's, it's, it's a really bad game. But <laughs> yeah, it can be. But if I talk about it in a positive way, you'll see that. If I... Yeah. The, I would add one more th good thing to the game. I would say it's almost the replayability of the game is almost endless for two reasons. First, of course, there are like tons of cards on both the two sides and you can lay out the grids in so many ways. And another really important thing is that you, you, if you switch the teams, even if you play with the same group but just switch the teams, you get totally new experience because people think differently. Yeah. They, their brain creates different associations. Uh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So, um, code names, smart and genius as well. This, the same with that little mm -hmm. in the box, you get a genius game, yeah. like with the Red 7. Mm -hmm. I think they're both genius games. I agree. So, yeah, your number one? My number one is, um, I think I'm going to surprise, it's The Grizzled. It's a cooperative game, I know, I know, but you're going to lose this game quite soon. Really? So, yes, you lose the game fast, so it's short game, it's engaging game, but I can't take the game, like, I can't take this game as, like, a real board game because I know it's going to be short, I know I'm going to lose. But I still enjoy the game, that's the thing, I still enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's a it's small game, it has, for me, terrific and beautiful art that really matches the theme. I like thought the, you didn't like the game that much. I did enjoy. If I think about this game, like playing in the middle of a yeah. I absolutely love it. I love oh, the okay. idea. That's the okay. thing. I think I expected from this game more like a cooperative game. But I feel this game much more like a filler. And I love this game as a filler. Yeah, the same same situation as uh, with me getting the code names. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I I'm totally fine. Yeah, so Just, uh, I you, can, you can argue, but for there is a thin I line between games, so you can... Yes, and especially the filler is like what fills something yeah yeah so yeah these are our number Did ones you? uh yes a lot uh grizzled uh, i played this one we played it together uh, surprise, surprise. we lost badly all the times and um yes uh, i liked it maybe not that much uh than alina that alina um it isn't a filler game for me though because the theme and how you are going to the game it feels bigger, it feels bigger for me, but it's not a sign of a bad game, it just feels a, like a bigger card game for me, um, but not a filler game. I, although I can, I can understand, we played it a few times in a row, mm -hmm. and I can, maybe it will become a filler game for me if I, I will just play it more, maybe I just played too many games that night there, mm -hmm. that I just cannot recognize the filler game, but yeah, Grizzled. A great choice. Uh, if somebody, if one of you hasn't tried Grizzled, you should try Grizzled. It's quite unique. Work, work, but sorry, if you hate game. Ga uh, losing in corps, might not be for you because it's extremely hard to. Although it's fast, yeah. Yes. It's, on the other hand, it's fast and it can be something unique for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we also hate some genres, but we like few games in these genres that. No. Had lots of fun with the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, let's go to the picks that our friends have. Um, first of all, not all uh, gamers have um, told their games this time, uh, but Kyle. Uh, Kyle says that his favorite filler game is Smash Up. As you can see. See, exactly. Yeah. Additional game that it's not classical filler, but yeah, it feels filler for him. Okay. Uh, he says, short and fast, not too serious. 
Not my choice for the evening's main gaming fair, but just the right length when you were waiting for enough people to show up or for something to end. Cool. Yeah, so for him it's say, well, we haven't tried it yet. Uh, we were going we to try. I just, uh, I don't know, I just don't want to play it really. I don't know why. Maybe it's cartoony art and like, yeah, I think really. You, you, I think you know in advance that you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's something more like that. Maybe. All right, uh, to the next. Uh, Margaret or Maggie Butts says that playing a Bluxen or Linko, it's in US, uh, mm -hmm. is a great couple minutes of uh, jiggling and swiping points. Simple rules, just enough luck to make it engaging and those dang cute foxes on the cards. Aww. Yeah, I have seen that game and I wanted to buy I know, it, it was on our point. wish list for a long time. Yeah, I I know why I didn't buy it. Yeah, eventually. why? Because it was just cards and numbers, really, and I it was like a was it a trick taking game. I, I know it remember. was out of stock for a long time. Maybe. You... No, no, I just decided not to buy it because we bought at that time we bought so many games that it was like mm, this will be lost in in the pile of. But we were seriously lots of other recent game. releases, you know. Yeah, but maybe we'll still buy it and try it. At one yeah, point. I think if we. Like, by the time we order games from somewhere, it will be in stock. I think, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm totally in cute foxes. <laughs> cute foxes, well. So, um, Suzanne, you know her as well, says, I like games like Quix, Quinto, and Rolling America, Rolling Japan as fillers. They are super portable, quick, easy to teach and play, but still have some depth in them. Especially Quinto and Rolling America. Um, we don't know much about these games. I've, I've seen these games, I've seen these games, I've, I've seen the Rolling Japan. It was in Essen as well, as long as I remember. Yeah, uh, the other ones, I don't really know much about them. Mm -hmm. They must be really like classical filler type games. So. But they're not selling them in Estonia. Or Quicks, what was there? Maybe. I don't know. I but let's. But thanks for, for Suzanne's uh, thought. And let's go to Clive. He says, It takes a lot to beat one night ultimate werewolf. Oh. Guaranteed time length, random enough to break those prone to uh, analysis paralysis, but with some real logic and psychology, I'm sorry, and psychology possible. Good pick. Uh, yeah, for a filler game, uh, really fun game that's I uh, yeah that's that's the another thing where one night ultimate variable for me is a party game mm -hmm. and I don't know maybe maybe filler games for me are more thinky games and one night ultimate werewolf is a pure party game for me that's the that's the thing I mentioned in the between we don't <sighs> play like. this classical filler games where you usually don't have to think almost at all we don't play those. That's why we like a bit more thinky, mm -hmm. shorter games. Yeah, that's uh, that's the reason. We, I think we have we played like one later to Ultimate Werewolf. That's um, it was random. We it it isn't at least it's not my for us. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not my taste. I have never enjoyed those hidden role games when the whole game is built on that. It's just not my yeah. cup of tea. I can understand the the mm -hmm. enjoyment of this one where you are closing your eyes, but. In the end, when we played it, it was like it was a big mess. We just closed our eyes, we did some things there, and then like, oh, you're well, werewolf. No, you're werewolf. All right. So and um, yeah, we're accusing each other and what's the Don't fun? get us wrong. It yeah. just didn't work for us. I still believe it's a good game. I totally understand, and I can totally imagine people enjoying that, or you no, know, people enjoying the game. It's just not for us. That's it. Right. Let's go to Zoe, and she says that her favorite filler game is the game, and she Which says game? the game. Which game? I don't understand. What about game? <laughs> right. So um, she says, addictive to get rid of all of your cards. Great icebreaker. Super easy to learn. Hard to master. Fun to play. Takes up almost no space, and you can learn in five minutes. Yeah, um, 
we'll probably never play this game because of the name, the game. No, it's fine, the name. No. I don't like the artwork. It, but, yeah, it, you can uh, have, have the picture where there will be a game called The Name. But the deck builder, the deck builder game? Yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. I know Susanna it's think It's impossible made, to made find the game. <laughs> I don't think it's that hard. In the search, I have tried. Yeah. Susanna made really good, like, re... No, it's not re-theme, of course, but just redesign, I think. It's gorgeous. That game, I would actually play. No, never. I would um, play. No, just, it, it looks so boring. Uh, I got the rules. I looked through a few videos. Red 7 can, looks as boring in the beginning. Yes, but when I looked at the Red 7 and the gameplay from the video, I understood that it might interest me. When I looked at the okay. game, it was like, how oh, this boring game can even be nominated for Spiel des Jahres, sorry. Yeah, that, that was my opinion and the artwork is, at least in Red 7 you have these rainbow colors. I love the stylish mm -hmm. cards here. Uh, it's ugly for me, but yes. it's only my opinion, no, I so agree. don't get it like Not only, wrong. yes. I agree that the game is ugly. So yeah, um, and last one is Andres. He says his favorite game is Skull or Skulls and Roses. And he says, uh, Skull, for the bluffing and taunting moments, it also plays fast and looks nice. Yeah, I, I would agree it looks nice. Mm -hmm. um, it probably plays really fast. But it's an, another like pure bluffing game uh, with a lot of randomness uh, that we usually don't enjoy. Yeah. And yeah, we have a small story when we uh, tried to... It was a board gaming camp. We had... It was like 2 or 3 at night. It was 1 like a.m. We tried to... 1 a.m.? Yes, it was two yes no, it was oh, 1. Okay. We tried... I remember it so well. We tried to learn Panamax from yes. this terrible... Panamax rulebook, you know, if you... At 1 a.m. at night, while well, we had like long... It was not that long, but still. And there was a g group of players who were playing and laughing so loud when they played Skulls. Yeah. That's why we remember the game. Yeah. It, and was, they... it was impossible for all other players to play. Yeah, for, for all other, like, uh, yeah, tables tables to, to get into games and play. They were laughing too much, and you know. It's, it's probably a like really like loud party game i think uh, they made it really loud <laughs> it no well, i can imagine it was fun yeah i'll try so, no no i'll skip that definitely i just don't like even the idea of everything i i i, le I learned the rules the how game. to play i don't it. think we'll, yeah. i will enjoy the game because of the bluffing but i would actually play it try. okay okay fillers are not my genre yes overall, as you can see. it's not our um, genre not so, really. um, these were our picks and our friends' picks, and you should tell us what are your picks. And you can totally concept. argue with us about yeah. our filler criteria. If you feel like that, we are really, we like arguing, yeah. doing all the time. Also, please subscribe and share our channel, we'll appreciate that. And I hope we'll see you next time with a next video or any other type of video. Uh, let me see for a moment. The next uh, video, top three video, will be Gateway Games. Okay. That will be quite interesting as well. What are Gateway Games for uh, for uh, any player? I you know, know your top one. Really? Yeah. Are you, already, you looked inside no, here? No, no. Okay. <laughs> but we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye bye.